Good morning. This is Friday, May the 6th of May, 19, uh, 2016, and we're interviewing Marge Legrone, and she is part of our historical society, but she is a long-term resident of Rancho Bernardo. So, Marge, let's begin by you telling us where you were born and when. I know you're 91, so you have a lot of things to tell us. Absolutely. Well, I was born in Haverhill, Massachusetts, March 23rd, 1925. But when I was 13, my mother and I traveled to San Diego, California to join my stepfather who was in the Marine Corps in San Diego. So I enlisted, I went to then Point Loma High School and I also graduated from San Diego State College. So you've been here quite a few years in this area. Uh, I think it was 1938 that we moved to San Diego. And you met your husband. My husband had just finished. He was uh, in the Air Force during World War II and he had just finished. And uh, interesting thing, we were what I call an arranged marriage because uh, my mother used to do her banking at Silvergate Savings in uh, Ocean Beach. My husband had just helped his sister with a grocery store in, uh, in uh, Ocean Beach, and he took his banking to Silvergate, and the gal who was one of the checkers told my mother, you know, I have this nice young man who's single, and you have a daughter who is also single, I think what I'll do is have a dinner and invite them for dinner. And you know, we were married 67 years after that. <laughs> wow. And where did you live in um, Point Loma, I think you said? Oh yeah, what was it? 2132 Wabasca Drive, I think was the address. Yeah, we lived there for a while and uh, then I remember uh, the first house my husband and I bought was on Sunset Cliffs Boulevard, a little bungalow. And then after that, we bought one on Narragansett. In the meantime, we had uh, children, two little girls and a boy. The boy was first. And is that when you opened your first grocery store? The first grocery store, my husband was already in the grocery business because uh, his sister and brother-in-law were having financial problems. And uh, my husband actually, when he graduated from college, went to work for Life and Casualty Insurance Company in Nashville, Tennessee, and really intended to be an accountant. But uh, in order to help his brother-in-law and sister, he invested in the grocery store and uh, gradually we took it over. And then from there we opened a second store and then a third one in Escondido. And the one in Escondido we opened in 1952. Okay. Did you move to Escondido? We moved to Escondido and the population at that time was 8,000. And my hasn't it grown. Oh yeah, it's changed a lot. Yeah. And when did you move to Rancho Bernardo? Okay, we moved, okay, we sold the grocery store, we sold the, all, all the grocery businesses, and we sold that in 1985, I think it was. So we decided to look for a place to retire. We went to Grass Valley in Nevada, we went to Green Valley in south of Tucson, we went to oh, Arizona, of course, Scottsdale, everybody loves Scottsdale. And we finally decided because our children were still living in Escondido, we finally decided to uh, go to Rancho Bernardo, and that was in 1987. So what was it like here in 1987? Well, it was a very interesting thing. They had just started developing Bernardo Heights. Oh. The golf course was completed, and people were lined up to buy places, and we were very fortunate uh, we bought a condominium at Las Flores. 
and it was when we bought it, it was bare ground, so we got to choose out, choose the uh, tile, the carpeting, and all. And we've been there ever since. And I figured that uh, next year it'll be 30 years old. Wow! So you've seen lots of changes since then. Uh... I have. I've seen lots of changes, and. Uh, one of my most interesting jobs has been working for the Rancho Bernardo Historical Museum. I remember Susan, and Flo Susan Floyd and I up on the Quonset Hop at the top of the hill. And uh, we got all the, uh, the Daily Times advocate was uh, getting rid of all their uh, pictures. And we wanted to digitalize those and make sure that we kept them for posterity. So we did that and we got it all done. We now have it in the archives if anybody's interested. That's great. So you saved a lot of history. Yes, we have over the past. Susan and I and uh, Sue, uh, Sue Engelskirchen helped and Betty Miller helped. It was hot in the summer and cold in the winter, I remember. Yeah, that, I can imagine working in a yeah. tin and then we, and then we moved over where they have the olive and uh, tastings now, the olive and vine shop. And we were there for, what, about three years, I think? Uh, it was four. Four years, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then we had the chance to take our building fund and build this property that we're in right now. So what are some of the things that you have done uh, with the Historical Society. I know that you're a docent on Friday mornings. Yes. Uh, okay. Tuesday I come in in the morning. Peggy and Judy Schlotman and I work and I do the filing. And I also do the obituaries. Keep up with the, the obituaries. So and then uh, Friday I come in at 10 and from 10 to 1 I'm a docent and greet all the people who come in to visit the museum. That it, uh, do you uh, get a lot of people from the farmer's market that come in? Oh, we do. Friday is our, probably one of the best days because of the farmer's market. And then the first Friday of the month, the uh, little shop on the top of the hill that has, it keeps the children's clothes gently hugged, it's called. Uh, a couple of nurses started that. and. Uh, they're always appreciative of any donations. In fact, I belong to a knitting group, and we knit uh, hats and booties and little uh, baby blankets, and we give them to, our, uh, to the Gently Hugged. Oh, that's great. And that's all part of the winery and, and the historical yes. society. And the first Friday of the month is when they're there receiving things. And I know people will stop at the museum and they'll say, oh, how do I find it up there to the gently hunt? Um, back to the obituaries. People are always interested in obituaries. Mm -hmm. um, do you, does the Historical Society subscribe to newspapers? How do you find um, your obituaries. Okay, I get the uh, union every day. I go through that every day and I look for Rancho Bernardo, specifically Rancho Bernardo. Then we also get the uh, Poway News and uh, get it from there. Uh, I have cataloged it. Each year has a catalog. So if you're interested and you know the year that the person that you're looking for passed away, it would be in the year and then each month. So it's very easy to find once you know. Did your children go to Poway schools or was it? Oh, my children all went to uh, Orange Glen High School. My son graduated and he got a scholarship to Caltech, which was nice. He graduated from Caltech and he was in the Vietnam War. Interesting thing, when uh, he was a junior at Caltech, they started conscripting. So in order to finish college and not be drafted, he joined the Air Force ROTC. And after that, he went to Colorado and trained. He flew, and he always, I have people come into the museum, and uh, they were in the Vietnam War, and it's always very interesting to hear their stories. My son says, 
I wasn't in the war, I was over it, and there's a world of difference. That's true. <laughs> but as a result of him being in the Air Force, he then decided to uh, become a pilot, uh, and he uh, went to work for Alaska Airlines and became a captain with Alaska Airlines. What he did, he put his 10 years in the Air Force and then 10 more years in the Reserve. So. Well, he did, yeah. What are your, some of your fondest memories of those early days in Rancho Bernardo? Early days in Rancho Bernardo. I remember when Rancho Bernardo was starting. When uh, we used to drive from Escondido to San Diego and see these signs, Swift and Company, with a big cow. And it was all fields with black Angus cattle running around. And it was, it was very interesting to watch. And I suspect what they had in mind, what Harry Summers and his group had in mind, was the same thing that they had uh, Green Valley in Arizona, uh, Scottsdale, uh, Del Webb. Del Webb is one of the first, I think, to start the senior citizens' communities. And it was just fun to watch it grow. And of course, now it's um, a lot of families in the senior aspect of Rancho Bernardo is probably limited to uh, with Westwood and... Well, it's grown so much now. Uh, I belong to the uh, uh, Rancho Bernardo Presbyterian Church. We have lots of children because not only are there the uh, senior citizen groups, but Bernardo Heights, Westwood, all of those are families. That's family right. Yeah. Gateway, Gatewood, all of those. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I know that a lot of people have the perception that it is a retirement community, but I think it's a lot more than that. Oh, it's a lot more now. Maybe originally that was the concept, but oh, they did build houses around the golf course, though, that were for families. Yeah. Yeah. I remember uh, Bertha Daly. See, when I lived in Escondido, I played golf and I belonged to, uh, well, we did join the Escondido uh, Country Club years ago. Before that, I played at Circle R Golf Course. But Bertha Daly had the uh, ladies' club from Escondido Country Club come to a meeting because she wanted to start a ladies club for Rancho Bernardo Inn. Oh. And so that was the nucleus of the ladies club there. Uh, what organizations did you belong to? I know you are part of the Historical Society, but um, is there anything else that you, did you work on Symphony on the Green or some of the uh, early no, events? No, I didn't. I was a good friend of Marge Gibson because uh, she was area representative for country friends from Rancho Bernardo. I was area representative from Escondido, so we would get together at the, the board meetings. That was fun. She was a lovely, lovely lady. Yeah. Um, can you think of something I needed to ask you that you would like to share that, so that we have a sense of history about the area? Well, okay, I can tell you, when I was 13 years old, my stepfather loved to fish. We would come down and there was a cabin right at the edge of Lake Hodges that rented boats. And you could take one of those boats out and go fishing at Lake Hodges. At that time, the, air, the road was 395. And there was a bridge, a small bridge across from uh, San Diego to Escondido. And there was a sign on it, no fishing from bridge. So I remember when uh, Interstate 15 began to be developed. In fact, where we lived, my husband and I would get out and we would jog along the Interstate 15 that hadn't been completed yet, the one from Escondido to Temecula. Wow. Um, were you here when the uh, Historical Society started the museum? Were you part of that? Not at its inception, no, because see, I didn't move here till 87. Okay, yeah. And it started before that. 
but you, how long have you been with the Historical Society? Oh, probably not quite 15 years. So you've seen some changes. Oh yeah, oh, changes in, yes, absolutely. We moved from that very small quarters. And I guess before that it was in people's garages. Right. Yeah. Uh, so when you see some of the things that come in that are in the archives, does it remind you of what it was like here back then? Well, uh, I can tell you one thing. I, uh, I joined the uh, Lady Lions Club uh, here in Rancho Bernardo, which was a very lovely group. Unfortunately, we didn't attract new young members. And uh, I know Sue Engels Christian was president for probably three years in a row. I was secretary. And we couldn't get people to take over the job. So finally we had a big meeting of what was left of us and decided that we would just absolve the club. And all the records now are over here in the archives. And I think they've been digitalized. I think that uh, we've had somebody working on them so that we have all the records of the uh, Lady Lions Club. And of course the Women's Club has brought in things, the Sorotomist Club, and we, we take care of all of that in the archives. If anybody's interested, why, uh, I'm sure that they can come in and find out. Tuesday right. is a good day if you're interested in investigating. And to also make an appointment with Peggy. Yes. Absolutely. But, um, I Peggy don't, Rossi is the uh, one who is responsible for it. I don't think a lot of people realize what a treasure trove of information that we have here. You're absolutely right. And it's thanks to people like you that uh, has helped to preserve it. Well, you know, we have probably almost all of the records from the Daily Times Advocate that they, that they wanted to get rid of. Wow, and you have all the Pomerada newspapers in Rancho yes. Magazine. Uh huh. So, well, I think it's been a good interview. Is there anything else you'd like to tell us before we close? Oh my goodness, not really. I think I, <laughs> I think I've said enough. Okay. Well, Marge, thank you so much. This is really important for us to record people like you that have lived here for a while, so there is a sense of history. Well, you know, that's the good thing that the Rancho Bernardo History Museum is doing, for everybody to come and access themselves. Yeah. Thank you. I want to show you a book that Peggy Rossi helped my husband. My husband compiled it, and Peggy was the one that put it in uh, book form for him. And it's just a story of our past. And uh, it shows a picture here of our original grocery store back in 1947. My goodness. We were married at the Hope Point Loma Presbyterian Church in 1947. And uh, we had a grocery store there. Then some pictures here of our houses that we lived in, several houses in the past before we moved to Escondido. Uh, Peggy Rossi also, Peggy Rossi also helped my husband compile a book in hardcover uh, covering his uh, ancestry. He goes all the way back to Germany, Schönau, Germany. I'm done.